Welcome to the greatest show on earth, Mexican style. Your host, Jorge Dirty Face, the clown by it. much sweat, completely dehydrated. He showed a lot of heart and a lot of courage in being a world champion. And even here, going down the three times, as you said, he was able to make it through the round. Famous for his somersaults and backflips in the ring, Jorge Pais ruled the 80s and 90s boxing scene as a colorful character who provided full value for money to boxing aficionados for nearly two decades. While the clown prince of boxing wasn't as great as someone like Salvador Sanchez or Julio Cesar Chavez, he was still a highly skillful boxer whose ability to evade punches Early. and Pius begins to and fire back with fury got in the ring. Chantro, by the way, back in 1984. Oh, nice uppercut there by Paez. A good left hook as well. Nice rhythm here by Jorge Paez. Set him apart from the rest of his peers. In today's video, we look back at the career of one of the most iconic figures in boxing. Born and raised in Mexicali, Mexico, Jorge Pais was the son of a boxer from the 1950s. After his parents' separation, Pais found himself under the care of his grandmother, who was the proprietor of Circus Olvera. To make ends meet, Pais started his journey as a circus performer, specializing in acrobatics. He would also entertain viewers with his clownery, but since he had the blood of a boxer running through his veins, he would often showcase his will to throw down in the streets. Owing to his aggressive nature, Pies' grandmother asked him to take up boxing. Grandma's lesson was simple. If you're good at something, never do it for free. Pies never liked boxing, but the idea of earning money through fist fighting wasn't a hard pass. In his early teens, the Mexican phenom's uncle introduced him to boxing, marking the beginning of one of the most acrobatic, electrifying, and colorful careers in the sport. From 1984 to 1988, Pies competed 28 times with 25 victories, two defeats, and one draw, before eventually bagging an IBF featherweight title shot against Calvin Grove, an undefeated 34-0 boxer who was regarded as one of the most technical fighters of his time. Pies had a snowball's chance in hell, yet he fought fire with fire in front of his people in his hometown of May Cali. While Calvin wasn't entirely in his groove early on, he still managed to put Pies off balance. If it was 12, he would still be the champion. That was a pushdown. Pies survived and then unleashed hell in the shape of a tight right hook. Hang in there against Pies, and there was the right. The crowd responds as Grove holding on. Once Grove made his way back up, Pies went berserk. Into the 15th, could he survive? No three knockdown rule for an IBF champion. And down went Grove again. Down for the second time. Grove was tough, but probably too tough for his good. He got up again, only to taste the mat once more. That's right, he's pulling up his instincts from all those fights, those amateur fights that he had. The fight was close up until Pies' late flurry of strikes, which earned him the victory and the IBF featherweight title by a majority decision. Since the first fight was too good to be true, a second one was automatically warranted. Only this time, the Mexican was the man to beat. 
Grove was confident heading into the rematch. Well, the thing I expect, uh, you know, he, he, he rushes in and I was going straight back. So uh, uh, we uh, cleared that up so we won't be going straight back. And uh, you see tomorrow, I'm just going to just pick him apart. You know, I have the tools to do that. He can't get any better. But so was Pies. It's going to be different this time. I'm not going to be fighting like I did last time. I came out really slow. This time I'm going to be going in like a bull. And I'm very well trained to hold the 12th round if I can knock him out. Like their first fight, the rematch also took place in May Cali, although with lower temperance and under 12 round rules, meaning that El Mato Mato could afford to be more aggressive. And he indeed was. Eight ounce. Uh, say your glass. A little less than 120 back in August. Only 85 degrees. First round action. Pies grew stronger as the rounds progressed. In what way? More confident. Oh, heavier oh. shots. Stunned again. Trying to move away. Pies. The red lights come on at the last 10 seconds of the round. And a little cheeky, as he so often was. The champion, Jorge Pies. And there he's enjoying go. it. The fight continued in close quarters, where both fighters had moments. Oh. Right hand in front of his face, not protecting that eye, but protecting his nose. Baez now measuring. You ever see Calvin Grove get measured? Oh, Grove, a big left, and another one. Grove snaps out of the... The finish came late in the 11th round after Pies rattled his opponent with a couple of big right hands. And then a left hook that dropped Grove. Oh, round 11 goes down. Grove failed to beat the 10 count, giving Pies another remarkable victory. Pies' next title defense ended in a split draw against Louis Espinoza, following which he restarted his string of victories, most notably taking out Alan Makitoki in late 1989 in a non title bout. Early in the fight, Pies was oozing with confidence, jabbing relentlessly with his hands low. Followed by a lightning fast cat like combo. Oh. And some showboating. Pies was too quick for his slow and sloppy opponent. Right hand, wow. This guy weighs Although at times crazy enough to trade punches with his foe in close range. Come out. Now, now Flurry will come up. Pies' precision, defense, and counters got better as the fight progressed. the end of the round. So much so that his opponent quit between rounds six and seven. Pies continued his acrobatic rise in boxing when he stepped up to face Lupe Gutierrez in an IBF featherweight title defense. Dressed in yet another glittery outfit, Pies danced his way to war. Man, Adam, so he must really like Batman. A little cultural endeavor. He also had a special haircut for a special occasion with the word Mexico shaved on his head. Featherweight championship of the world is scheduled for 12. Gutierrez took the fight to the champion in the first round, opening a wide cut in Piaz's eyebrow at the midway point. A Piaz. Gutierrez still there and fighting hard. And Gutierrez did land a strong right hand above that left eye of Piaz. Boy, both these guys are throwing thunder. Everything they've got. Look at that left hook to the body that Gutierrez throws. Sprint. Gutierrez kept Pies on the ropes for the major part of round two as well. Ankle problem because of the fight or because of the uh, possible victory somersault after a championship fight. Final seconds of the second round. Another good one for the challenger, Gutierrez. Pies came back stronger in round three. And it's Pies waiting for his No effect at all on Pies. But by the fifth round, Pies was connecting at will. By Pies. Knock out his two losses, both early in his career in 
six-round bounce by the surgeon. This corner like saying, oh boy, that one hurt. The sixth round was the bloodiest of them all, as Pies up the ante, landing bombs and ending Gutierrez's night with one hit after another. And the sixth round, Gutierrez just been shoved around the ring. I don't know what he's waiting for. There it is. That's the end. Pies was still the king of the jungle, but with each vanquished challenge, a new and far tougher one appeared. Pies's next challenge was Troy Dorsey a world champion kickboxer who had made a name for himself in boxing because of his ferocious brawling. Pies had a knack for throwing down too, so it was tipped to be an exciting battle, and it didn't disappoint. Instead of being his usual agent of chaos self, Pies walked out as the Dark Knight with a Batman logo carved on his head. Dorsey swung for the fences like he'd come out of Arkham and put the champion immediately under pressure. He, he took himself to the wire last night. He's got to launch a kamikaze attack here to begin with. He's got to start. This is exactly the game plan that Dorsey envisioned. Right attacking the body, driving. Pies patiently ate dozens of shots on the ropes. The scoring is on the 10 point must assist. Handled by three scoring judges, no standing eight. Dorsey refused to put his foot off the gas, forcing Pies to fire back as well. Foster Rhodes has shot at Pies. Dorsey's win moved him up in the rankings. That's why he's here. This is only his. Since the American had a ton of success at round two, he continued to apply pressure in round three. Unfortunately, it backfired. And Pies. Dorsey managed to beat the 10 count, but he was undeterred as he continued to trade in the pocket. Oh, that is the nickname of Jorge Paez. That means flipper or somersault stemming from Paez's bank. The trend continued throughout the fight. There was not a moment when Dorsey wanted to fight at a distance with a superior boxer. One after another, punches continued to fly in their phone booth style showdown. Mexicali, Mexico. That right hand got in, thrown by Paez. Oh, good shot by Paez. With the right hand. Good hammering shots, not those shots from outside like that. The two continue to throw ballistic rights and nuclear lefts till the end. Will go to the scorecards. Down to 10 seconds remaining for the IBF featherweight title. And that is it. After 12 rounds of back and forth war, Pies was declared the winner by a razor close split decision. Paez, in a disputed decision, has retained his IBF featherweight crown as he... A couple of fights later, Paez lost his IBF belt to Tony Lopez. But after a string of victories, he was back in title contention, facing the late legend Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker for the WBA, WBC, and IBF lightweight titles. The first minute of the fight was watchful, but Pies put his opponent on notice with a series of body shots. The back of the neck. Whitaker started to jab to the body early. And Whitaker responded with a couple of jabs and shots to the body. You know that this fight may go 12 rounds. Whoever gets in the better body punches earlier is going to have an easier night. Able to stop Paez's charges with hop. Get hurt without even punch being thrown. The second round was just as competitive as the first. 17 punches, according to punch stat in round number one. But there's an uppercut from Paez that landed and is probably his. He is not truly backing up. He's circling him and keep touches. Solid left hand. He has so much confidence. Waves in whether he gets hit or not. The tactical slugfest continued in the third round, with Whitaker having the better of the exchanges. Jab in the fight. He may not throw one. He comes in with the rep. As you look at Tyus's forays, Whitaker may have to decide, I've got to fight. And I don't think he's made a decision yet. When he does, to change things. But right now, he's playing around with 
There's the right hand by Paez. Whitaker lands the left. Whitaker's jab is starting to shorten up. Paez landed a few big punches early in round four, momentarily rocking Whitaker. Whitaker survived, but Pies refused to put his foot off the gas. The middle rounds were full of punches to the head and body. Maromero was eating big shots, but he continued to march forward like a zombie. The final two rounds of the fight gave fans non-stop violence as both men gave one another a taste of hell. After 12 rounds of intense battle, Whitaker was awarded the victory by a unanimous decision but Matto Matto received full marks for his lion-hearted effort. Having failed to capture the WBA, WBC, and IBF lightweight titles against Whitaker in 1991, Pies bounced back with a string of victories, with his most notable win coming against Roger Bonine in the summer of 1992. The Mexican phenom was unusually quiet during his introduction and perhaps wanted his fists to do the talking instead. Six IBF lightweight contender introducing the clown prince of boxing. Bonine landed a sharp combination early. Showtime in the circus. Pies didn't land that many strikes, but when he unleashed a left hook, Bonine was brought to his knees. All right, Dad, what you get me into? Why'd we come all the way from Chattanooga to see this clown? Bonine beat the 10 count, but Pies was now in the driving seat. Pies is winding up now. This isn't going to last long, folks. Midway through the first round, Pies stunned Bonine twice in a matter of seconds. Shrug of the shoulders. Pies looks one way and fakes like magic jab from the other. Then came the final flurry. That's all the fight. That's over. It was typical Jorge Pies' performance where not only did he embarrass his opponent with punches and bunches, but also added insult to injury with constant showboating and antics. The same could be said against Paez's fight against Eric Madrid. Paez entered the ring dressed as a big carrot, according to the commentary team. A little early for Halloween or what? What is that? I think he looks like a big carrot. And one that was hard to digest for his opponent. Early on, Paez broke his foe's rhythm with taunting. Madrid in blue. Then he evaded shots like he was from the Matrix. Again, somewhere down the line for a... Tom Eric Madrid, oh, a good right by Madrid. But he was really a And then he let his hands go. Good left hook by, by Madrid landed some nice shots at round two, but with a bit of dirty boxing. Well, he's all over, Baez. But... Eric Madrid wants to make it a fight. And he's all business in there. And most of those... However, Pies was still the sharper puncher by a mile. So he's used to putting on a show. Oh, there's a good... Round two coming to a close. And nice exchange by the two. We'll be back after this. Round three was the most entertaining with Madrid throwing ballistic punches and Pies landing nuclear counters. Pretty good blow, too. Well, he felt that right. And the blood really spurting now after that right hand. Pies is the opponent. But he realizes that they don't have to run the nose. He may have a cut lip as well. And Pies is just... Round four was a one-sided beatdown with Pies rocking Madrid with his cat-like reflexes. Tough to lose, so... The fight was stopped since Madrid's face was a bloody mess. Once Pies bounced back into the win column against Madrid, he managed to win six in a row and challenge Oscar De La Hoya, who was 13-0 at the time of their fight. Pies used his highly anticipated fight for political campaigning, shaving Ernesto Zedillo's name on his head to cast his vote for the presidential candidate. Scheduled for 12 rounds and you can see, what does that say in the hair? If only he had focused on fighting. Early in the first round, Mato Mato pressed the action against De La Hoya. On August 4th of 1988, it was a 15 round decision, three times in the final round to get the championship. Paez. Pai's opponent jabbed relentlessly, however. De La Hoya. What he was told he was by the trainer. 
three in a row following his loss to Oscar De La Hoya, before bouncing back with three victories to earn a vacant WBC Continental Americas super featherweight title shot against Narciso Valenzuela. Narciso had a great first round as he capitalized on Pais' slow start to attack with sweet combinations. But I think his best period came between 88 and Sweet Paul Hodkinson in a WBC title Pies would hit back now and then. Actually beat to Eduardo Perez, lost it to Jose Manjadas, won it again. Pies produced the bigger moments in round two, tagging his foe on several occasions. So two Mexicans then contesting this WBC title of America. He's a German fighter, that's for sure now, and he's seven. So he's two. Narciso fired back whenever he found an opening. He's two draws, but he's top 27 opponents. Well, that was about. The two went berserk in round three, fighting in close quarters and with vicious intentions. Then came an uppercut from the pits of hell that sent Narciso crashing to the mat. Oh, good shot. Good shot there, very hurtful punch by Jorge Pais. After four consecutive defeats in title fights, Pais finally managed to get his hands on a gold belt, which he lost in his very first title defense against Julian Wheeler. But that set him up for an electrifying rematch in January of 1997. Well, I'm looking for him to um, probably come straight at me, I'm trying to land a little bit more body shots. Um, and I think he's probably going to get aggressive this time, but I'm ready and prepared for him. Just as Wheeler expected, Pies drew first blood with a stinging combination. Fight in the way that he had previous, previous fights. One thing he did, no other goofing around in the ring, no dancing. No... Soon after, Wheeler let his hands go as well. Fighters ever to climb into this or any other ring. Good right hand by Pies. Now Pies has got some power, make no mistake about it. And... Uh, the back and forth continue. We'll be the sorrier for it, I'm sure. And this order of the two men, right hand by Paez. Down not once but twice, but he got back up and fought a courageous battle. Again. Things started to heat up as rounds went on. Certain fighters face people whose styles just are never right for it. Getting off first, Paez comes back with a countering left hand. But do you think that he should be able to get a shot with him? Yeah, but he, you know, he possesses a pretty good punch. That's been over certainly a lot more than this. The final few rounds were a slugfest. But I ended up scoring it even. I had him down two points going in. Pius needs to throw some punches, Tom. Yeah, this isn't doing him any good. The crowd loved it on the line tonight. He beat Pies. After 12 rounds of war, Pies was declared the winner and once again the WBC Continental America's super featherweight title holder. After successfully defending his title once, Pies went in search of more belts, facing Juan Ankil Macias in a vacant NABU super featherweight title. Pies walked out to find wearing another outrageous outfit and fully in his zone, dancing nonstop. Something. Forget the 17 years. Forget that this is his 93rd professional fight. This guy is something else again. Wild, undisciplined, but I tell you, when he gets in the ring... Pies carefully made his reads on Macias in the first round, although he did eat shots like it was his breakfast. That's right. Well, you know, boxing is that kind of a game. Coming down to the close of round number one. I'm quite sure what the pelvic thrust does and <laughs> make people laugh. <laughs> Although Pies found it hard to time his shots, he still managed to land a few nice ones. Matias with the right hand up there. Matias begins to roll. Brings that bolo punch at him and throws. Really pulling a lot of punches here and exerting a lot of energy in this the second. The back and forth went on for a few more rounds. Trying to utilize it here in the second round of this fight. Garcia's was indicating he got hit low and well, nobody paid any attention to me. But Black Pius low. Well, Pius apologized for that low, low punch. You know, Pius has traditionally been a pretty clean fighter. 
held, and it was a headbutt that opened the cut so that if this should go to the cards, it has to be stopped because of it. They go to a technical decision. I don't think any kind of any buttons up, buttons up. I didn't either, but they've been. In the sixth round, Pies dropped Macias, courtesy of a few tight hooks. He's leading again, but we'll check it in a moment. Oh, Macias! Once Macias got up, Pies finished him with a final flurry of strikes. The guy is hurt and knows how to finish him off. And he's got Macias in Macias' corner. Russell's looking on. Yeah. And I think uh, Pat's going to have, there's 10 seconds left. Oh, come on. This is a mess. That's it. With that, Pies added another title to his trophy cabinet. Even so, Mato Mato's craving for additional gold remained unsatisfied. A few months later, Pies stepped up to face Juan Polo Perez for the vacant IBA America's Super Featherweight title. For this fight, Mato Mato came out wearing Nacho Libre's luchador tights instead of his colorful boxing shorts. Esta noche, claro, la mar está listo pues con los anuncios de rigor. As usual, Pies took more than he gave early on. La Asociación Internacional de Boxeo. Regardless, Pies kept coming forward. Pies got sharper as seconds passed by. Mano muy dura que le quitó el aire, está trabajando bien con la izquierda abajo, mano mero, con la izquierda y una derecha ahora. The fight was bananas in the final minute of round two, as both fighters traded with reckless abandon. Da la impresión de que el mano mero quiere liquidar ese pleito antes de lo... In close range, Pies dropped Perez with a sharp right hook. El lanzador está trabajando abajo. ¡Oh, lo tomó! Con una derecha. Perez refused to beat the 10 count handing Pies another career-defining victory since it was the final title win of his career. Pies continued to fight for five more years, with the majority of his fights and victories coming in non-title bouts. He eventually retired in December of 2003 on the back of an 18-fight unbeaten run. Beyond his championships in multiple weight classes, Jorge Mato Mato Pies' lively personality and acrobatic entrances symbolized the essence of entertainment in the sport. His resilience and enduring popularity spanning nearly two decades cemented him as a beloved figure in the world of combat, so much so that his legacy extends beyond statistics and championship belts. The clown prince of boxing was an icon who made the sweet science fun. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for updates. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to having you with us in the next video.